Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Assalamu alaikum. At the outset, I'd like to say that I am in the United Kingdom. And <laughs> Scotland agreed to stay within the Union, so I didn't have to bring my passport with me today. Lady Sheikh obviously is my minder. She manages my parliamentary uh, office. And when my time is up, she goes like that. So I hope she doesn't have to go like that to me today. Ladies and gentlemen, there are over 2.7 million Muslims in the United Kingdom. Muslims have come to this country from different parts of the world. Some of the Muslims are second and third generation UK citizens. I always say that people who have come here from abroad and children of people who come here from abroad should regard this country as their home, although, of course, they can keep their connection with the home country. Ladies and gentlemen, Muslims have done very well in every walk of life. They've excelled in the professions, in businesses, academia, the media, sports, and other fields. This country is a land of opportunity, and sky is the limit for people who work hard and are enterprising. My own family was expelled in 1972, and we came to United Kingdom penniless, I mean penniless, General I mean, took everything from us except what we have up here. Today, I'm chairman of four companies with Allah's help, and with Lord Martin, I sit in the House of Lords. Muslims have done well in Scotland. Some Muslims originally came here and were peddlers or door-to-door -door sales. The Muslims have shown initiative and have been innovative and they have of course flourished in Scotland. Muslims have contributed to the well-being and advancement of not only Scotland but I believe the whole of the United Kingdom. They have provided employment, created businesses and importantly of course paid taxes. Most of the Muslims are peace-loving people. But unfortunately, there's a tiny minority who do not understand the meaning, the true meaning of Islam. There are now over 100,000 Muslims in Scotland. They are proud to be Scottish. And I was told yesterday, there's a Muslim tartan. So Lord Martin, can you get me a tie of the Muslim tartan? What my friend Lord Martin has given me is a painting of the tenements with boys playing football. In fact, the dog is also playing football. And I've got it in my office in the House of Lords, Lord Martin. Ladies and gentlemen, Islam is a religion of peace. As a peer, I have my coat of arms. And on my coat of arms, I have two doves because I want to give the message that Islam is indeed the religion of peace. Most of the Muslims are peace-loving people, but there is unfortunately a tiny minority who have a distorted and wrong impression of Islam. Religion is written in the Holy Quran. I repeat this, it's written in the Holy Quran. If anyone kills a person, it would be as if he kills the whole humanity. If anyone kills one person, it will be as if he kills the entire humanity. If anyone saves a life, it would be as if he saved the whole humanity. And that is written in the Holy Quran. And we believe in this. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, the so-called jihadists in Iraq and Syria do not understand the true principles of Islam. They are harming women, 
harming children and committing barbaric acts. In regard to war, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Khalifa Abu Bakr, the Khalif Abu Bakr, gave clear instructions to Muslims that in event of wars, do not harm women, do not harm children, do not damage crops. And these are the rules of engagement in Islam. Unfortunately, the so-called, these hadiths do not seem to understand what Islam is all about. Muslims should follow Salauddin Ayyubi. People in the West call him Saladin. You know when Saladin conquered Jerusalem, he allowed people of all faiths to live in peace. Before him, when Christians conquered Jerusalem, they totally massacred the Muslims and the Jews. But Salauddin was a magnanimous person. And Muslims should follow the example of Salauddin Ayyubi. The so-called jihadists are trying to convert people to become Muslims. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not allowed in Islam. It is written in the Holy Quran. There is no compulsion in religion. I'd like to say there's no compulsion in religion. In regard to Muslims' relationship with other communities, it is written in the Holy Quran. O oh, mankind, we have created you from male and female and made you nations and tribes that you may know one another. The gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, in Islam, Jews and Christians are people of the book. The books of Allah are the Holy Quran, the Torah, Anjil, and Zabur. In fact, in the Holy Quran, we have an entire chapter which talks about Mary, mother of Jesus, and the birth and the birth of, of, of Christ. Now I want to talk about Mr. Bashir, Mr. Bashir Man CB. I've written, Mr. Bashir, I've written you a letter which I'm going to present to you. And I'm going to read what I've said to you, sir. This is the House of Lords paper. Dear Mr. Man, I'm writing to warmly congratulate you on the launch, on the launch of the Bashir Man Archive, Scotland's first archive dedicated to preserving the contribution of South Asian and Muslim communities in Scotland. I feel it is particularly apt that the archive is named after yourself, sir. Your pioneering achievements as the UK's first Muslim Justice of Peace in 1968 and the first elected Muslim to public office as Councillor for Kingston Ward of the City of Glasgow in 1970, amongst others, is truly remarkable. Mr. Mann, you are, sir, indeed a person of vision, and you have played a vital role to ensure the well-being and, pro and progressions of the Muslims and British society in the United Kingdom. The British community, the British Muslim community, can learn significant lessons from your experience, and I believe you are a role model for every young person, regardless of their background or origin. As the first Muslim conservative peer, I've had glimpses over the decade of the challenges as, as uh, oh, uh, I'm sorry, again. As the first Muslim conservative peer, I've had glimpses over the past decade of the challenges as pioneering Muslims engaging in political and civic society. Sir, your achievements since you arrived in the UK in 1953 are most admirable, and your progressive thinking and concerted efforts are commendable. I'm proud to be associated with the Bashir Man Archive and the colorful heritage video recording, and I wish you 
every success in the future. May Allah give you a long and healthy life.